and so we are in our final module of this e sectional series for this subject which is electrical services and illumination and we are in our lecture 17 uh, with this last three or four uh, series of lectures we will complete of module 5 and so the entire subject as well uh, so like every other module this has got two subheadings under it which is the first is extra low voltage system we have been studying different voltage levels voltage systems uh, right from our module 1 till module uh, 2 and uh, uh, this is a module where uh, we are going to study something in continuation but uh, we have not spoken about it in the previous module because we spoke about several voltage uh, range in terms of low high super high extra high and all that so this is on the bottom end of the spectrum which is extra low voltage system right so this is nothing but your uh, data cables uh, fiber cables basically something which carries data in it right and along with it, the syllabus asks us to know uh, service provider requirements or something which is an extension of those data cables and point matrix for an individual uh, a residence or an apartment. Right? So next part of this module is uh, electrical layout design. So we will have to take a particular uh, residential plan and do a typical uh, layout design, electrical layout design and uh, estimate their load <coughs> and uh, use conventions as per IS code and with this the module uh, gets over and so we will be completing the series of lectures. right? So, uh, let me move on to the next slide. So, ELV is extra low voltage system. It's a terminology used in construction world in an attempt to electrically define all the systems in a building which need electricity to run but are not part of the building's main electrical system. Uh, so, I hope this is pretty simple definition to understand. So, they are going to require electricity but they are not part of the building's main electrical system. It is as clear as that. Right? So, how if you have this question of oh, how they, if they need electricity at the same time they are not going to be part of the building's main electrical system, how is it possible? We will try to find an answer to this in the upcoming slides. Uh, ELV cover. So, what does this cover? So, what are the systems that we are talking about? Uh, in terms of they need electricity but they can't be part of the main electrical system they need the uh, extra low voltage system so who are these VIPs who is not getting into the any of the previous categories right so who are these people who are uh, not getting into any of the old categories so we have uh, some of them uh, which is uh, data network data network no, uh, needs no introduction so all of us know what a data network is the blue color wire or the gray color wire which comes and gets connected to your uh, system uh, when you are using a LAN R which comes to the router uh, for your Wi-Fi connections right so next is your CCTV some CCTV systems all that we see in a CCTV system is just the camera but uh, what is happening behind is it is constantly uh, recording and so it has to uh, send those signals to be safely stored in a particular place let's say a hard disk so this is a cable which is going to transfer these data that it is continuously picking from one point to the storage space. So at, at the same time we should also remember that this needs uh, power to run, right? So uh, some of the CCTV systems can uh, directly take power uh, from the cable uh, data cable as well. Some of them rely on the main electrical power systems. And uh, so uh, we have this data uh, network, we have CCTV. So CCTV, I told you about it. Fire alarm systems is something which you will study in your uh, next semester services along with HVAC, lift escalators and uh, fire alarm systems and fire protection systems. But we will just know what a fire alarm system is. So uh, fire alarm system, uh, what, it, what it comprises is uh, a set of uh, detectors or sensors which detects that there is a a change in the temperature change or the, which detects the fire or the heat uh, and sends information to the other components in the circuit so that they can act accordingly for example one is a sprinkler uh, gets signal from the fire alarm system so that it can sprinkle water to put off the fire right so these all that we are talking in terms of these are the systems that would require our uh, extra low voltage 
right? So public address system, we must have uh, seen this in some of the offices or even uh, shopping malls, you must have seen the receptionist or the main counter will have a, a mic with them so that they can address the public, uh, be it uh, if in case of an uh, emergency evacuation during fire, at people, the entire public have to be evacuated in a systematic manner. Uh, and it is uh, for ma many other uses, but when it is even a system, and there is a system which is used to address the public at large in a particular facility, that becomes a public address system. Audio video solution, some of it, this is very clear to us, some of it, uh, we are familiar with the devices, some of the devices that we use uh, require main AC, <coughs> uh, which is part of our regular electrical uh, circuit system and uh, some of them is dependent upon the systems, uh, the primary systems that we use. Access control, if anybody of us have had a uh, chance to uh, visit offices, IT parks uh, or uh, law firms, you know they have uh, a restricted access in terms of their spaces, so not everybody can access so whichever spaces that uh, they would want to. So some of them, uh, some of their own employees will have restricted access to different places. Let's say uh, the MD cabin is not going to be accessed by everybody. So the MD is going to have his own ID card, which is, so all of these employees will have their own ID cards embedded with some uh, chip or code, uh, which is coded to, uh, which is coded, which has got some kind of uh, code, which can be read by the access reader so that it allows a particular person or a particular uh, person who has that card to access the particular space. <coughs> uh, so access control system is something which where you have a card and there is a card reader which is going to sense the card and it is going to allow you into a space. Right? Uh, similar to our ATM cards and uh, the machines that is going to read our ATM cards. And uh, intrusion detection system is when we have a large uh, farm or a large area of land where uh, it is uh, pretty difficult to have uh, manual control over who is entering, who is uh, uh, you know wandering around and all that. So if, uh, uh, if there is a necessity to detect any uh, unwanted intrusion in a particular space, so that is where we have these sensors which detects the int uh, intruders and uh, performs a set of operations accordingly as instructed or coded. Home automation, slowly it is getting uh, popular in our country, uh, but of course the way that we buy uh, some of them or most of them uses direct AC power because we don't do it as a system, so we are just buying single components. So when we do it as a system and we design a home automation system, most of the devices that we are going to use inside this home automation is going to be of uh, uh, requiring extra low voltage system and these are just a couple of things which I have listed out uh, here but the list is not restricted to just these six or seven uh, components. We will have uh, so many other components coming up. We will try to cover it, cover as much as possible in this lecture. Uh, moving on further, extra low voltage system. So if you have to look at the definition of an extra low voltage uh, electricity supply, Extra low voltage is an e electric electricity supply voltage in a range which carries a low risk of dangerous electrical shock. Extra low voltage is an electricity supply voltage in a range which carries low risk of dangerous electrical shock. I think this definition is again very simple to understand. Uh, this definition is according to IEC International Electrotechnical Commission. And there are, but there are so many other standards which define uh, what an extra low voltage uh, system is. But we will go by this definition in this context. And uh, normally an AC voltage below 50 volts and a DC voltage below 120 volts are considered to be extra low voltage uh, system, voltage range. Right? In the bottom of this slide I have al also listed uh, the three types, high voltage supply system, low voltage supply system and extra low voltage system. And the next two columns talk about the middle one talks about the AC voltage range and the final one talks about the DC voltage range. So for high voltage supply uh, uh, system, anything above 1000 volts uh, AC is termed as high voltage and anything above 1500 volts is uh, rated as high voltage DC supply system. And anything between 50 to 1000 volts is rated AC is rated as low voltage AC supply system and 120 to 1500 volts is going to be DC low voltage supply system. 
and what we are going to uh, what we are dealing with now is your uh, extra low voltage supply system which is less than 50 volts ac and less than 120 volts dc now we have the definition as per iec for extra low voltage system the types we have three types uh, under ex uh, extra low voltage systems one is separated or safety extra low voltage system next is protected extra low voltage system PELV third is functional extra low voltage system which is FELV before we move on to the uh, uh, circuit diagrams which is uh, put here in the slide uh, we will again <coughs> try to uh, look at their names carefully one is separated or safety extra low voltage uh, which is considered to be the safest uh, extra low voltage system and when, as we move further to protected and functional extra low voltage system now uh, the safety factor is uh, relatively uh, less okay so second is protected extra low voltage system plv uh, functional extra low voltage system is felv so now going down if we can carefully observe so the primary circuit and the secondary circuit and safety extra low voltage are separated extra low voltage system is separated right there is a line in between and even in PELV there is again a line which is which means the primary and the secondary circuit is separated whereas in FELV the central line is not there which means they are not separated but another thing which uh, as a difference if we have to spot the earthing is not connected to is not is neither connected to the primary circuit nor the secondary circuit in safety extra voltage system whereas in PELV protected and functional extra low voltage system earthing is the circuits are earthed right that is a difference again which you can spot in terms of uh, in between these three uh, voltage systems the first is uh, separated extra low voltage system in some of the standards it is also mentioned as safety extra low, low voltage system and uh, in fact uh, the third functional extra low voltage system is something which cannot be uh, which doesn't fit into the first two which is separated and protected extra low voltage system so it is just necessary for us to understand the first two so that whichever is not fitting into the first two will be called as your uh, functional extra low voltage system moving on further we will try to take up uh, these individually and understand what they actually are in a separated extra low voltage system the low voltage output is electrically separated when i meant the primary and secondary circuit are separated it is electrically separated from earth and also from other system means it is not having any connection whatsoever to the other systems and also the earthing right so therefore any single fault cannot create a risk of an electric shock there should not be any provision for earthing as well so this is used in uh, places where we have uh, like for example swimming pools uh, spas where uh, we have hazardous environment where the risk of electrical shock is relatively more right so but uh, all said and done there is always a uh, risk of electrical shock uh, if we still have more uh, 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 hazardous environment where we think we are prone to electrical shock the requirements has to be adjusted in such a fashion it can be even more stringent uh, normal vo nominal voltage can be limited down to 12 volts ac or 30 volts dc right okay so this is about uh, aclv it is not connected to any of the main electrical system also to the uh, earthing of the uh, main uh, building circuit moving to plv protective extra low voltage system there is no separation from the earth which means there is no separation from the earth means the earthing is connected the earth circuit the earth wire is going to get connected to the circuit and so this is a major difference between SELV and PELV where this has got its circuits earthed whereas in SELV that was not the case so if I have to read the definition in a protective earth extra low voltage system there is no separation from earth but otherwise the system satisfy all other requirements for SCLV including the voltage levels so in a PELV transformer going back to the transformer uh, topic uh, the magnetic core as well as the X enclosure can be connected to the earth right? uh, so in P a PELV circuit just as SCLV requires a design that guarantees a low risk of accidental contact with the higher voltage so we should again make sure that this is not going to establish even an accidental contact with 
the higher voltage circuit moving on further is our uh, functional extra low voltage FELD uh, describes any other extra low voltage circuit that does not fulfill the requirements for an SELV or a PELV circuit. Although the FELV part of the circuit uses an extra low voltage, it is not adequately pr protected from accidental contact with higher voltages in other parts of the circuit. Therefore, the protection requirements for the higher voltage have to be applied to the entire circuit. So, uh, like I told you before, whatever is not getting categorized under uh, SELV and the protected extra low voltage will be classified as functional extra low voltage system. So, this although the FELV, FELV part of the circuit uses an extra low voltage system, it is not adequately protected uh, from an accidental contact with higher voltages. Uh, okay, so because uh, the first one SELV is not even connected to the earth. So any kind of fault will not affect that. The PLV was connected to the earth, whereas this, there is not even a separation between the primary and secondary circuits. So it is not adequately protected from the accidental contact with higher voltages. So therefore the protection requirements have to be uh, relatively more for this kind of a uh, extra low voltage system. And we have some of the examples which is uh, lifted down, which you can read through. Uh, next is standalone power system. So we started this module with uh, extra low voltage system definition what are they where uh, they use their applications and we also uh, saw three types uh, ESELV safety or uh, separated extra low voltage which is the safest extra low voltage system PELV protected extra low voltage system which has got uh, connection to the earth and FELV which is functional extra low voltage which is uh, not which is neither separated nor uh, prevented from having connection with the earth Right. So now we are in a slide we are, uh, where we, are, we have standalone power systems. So in this, before we come to standalone power system, we spoke about all those extra low voltage systems. Right. So uh, the idea is apart from, of course, minimizing energy loss has always been the criteria or a source of worry from our uh, module one. Uh, the additional point that we have here is to maximize safety. Cables that we are going to use uh, for these systems are going to have uh, maximum safety at the same time minimum losses so uh, low voltages require higher current for the same power uh, if you can again go back to the basics of electricity we know power uh, that is w wattage is equal to uh, your uh, current in amps into multiplied by voltage so uh, if we have to read this statement again lower voltages require higher current for the same power so the power is the same the appliance that uh, the power that an appliance is going to require is the same Whereas uh, we have very low voltage available in the circuit, so V is less, this cannot change, V is less. So what needs to be increased is obviously the uh, current I, amps, okay. So lower voltages require obviously a higher current for the same power, for producing the same power. The moment we need higher current, it also results in greater resistive losses in the cabling. So let us have uh, take this analogy. So I have uh, a corridor of one meter width, and it is running for let's say uh, 100 meters. And uh, at the end of this uh, corridor, I need to supply 10,000 people, all of them running at the same time from one start point to an end point. So all of them have to reach uh, in a given time uh, after crossing this 100 meter mark without hurting each other, without falling on the ground, without uh, getting stuck in between right so why we have taken this analogy is when we say higher current it is the number of electrons that is passing in a particular wire if you could remember from our uh, electricity basics right so the higher current means when there are so many people going to, who's going to rush into this uh, corridor there is obviously somebody might fall off somebody might become an obstruction to the others somebody might slow down the entire uh, speed there are so many resistance right in uh, them performing a particular task and reaching the other end of the corridor uh, so this is the idea so so what happens is when you have so much of electrons passing and uh, have to energize a particular uh, appliance and the losses are going to be more right so the resistance is going to be more and so the losses are going to be more as well uh, so the cable, how do we make sure all of these uh, 10,000 people reaches the other end without hurting or without uh, much lag or losses, so as to increase the width of the corridor. So cable sizing must be uh, 
planned accordingly that uh, it should consider maximum demand what is the maximum number of people that is going to run in a particular corridor voltage drop how many of them can cannot sustain <coughs> injuries how many of them can actually cross and the current carrying capacities if we have a one meter corridor how one meter width wide corridor how many of them can actually go <coughs> uh, how many of uh, them can run simultaneously without uh, touching each without uh, you know hurting or touching uh, obstructing each other right so the voltage drop usually is the main factor that has to be considered but current carrying capacity which is also important as important as uh, <coughs> the voltage drop when you have such operation in place okay voltage drop is usually the main factor considered but current carrying capacity is as important when considering short high current runs such as between a battery bank and an inverter so uh, why did we name this a standalone power system this is because uh, most of us have a uh, inverter and battery backup at our houses households so uh, if you again uh, 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 <coughs> realize when there is a power cut some of these appliances are connected to our battery backup not everything but yes some of them the idea is when there is a power cut and when there is no uh, government uh, power supply available this is where some of these are get getting powered right so uh, that being the case so they are not dependent upon the main electrical system of a house so that is why they are just because they are not part of the main electrical system they called as standalone power systems so we, we have some of it uh, covered under our ups and server power requirements but yes, so this is the case with the battery backup uh, and an inverter. In this slide, we have uh, some of these systems which rely on uh, extra low voltage systems. Uh, we will try to cover it in detail in the next uh, session. But uh, in this slide, I will just read out uh, all that which is listed here uh, from the left in a, clock in a clockwise direction till the end, starting with the digital video. CCTV camera, security and access control, and uh, fire detection and alarm system, HVAC maintenance services, uh, lighting control and retrofit, smoke control, indoor air quality services, energy supply and load management is not part of our extra low voltage, uh, water management systems, energy information management, on site technical service, enterprise systems integration asset locator, mechanical maintenance and retrofit, environmental control, intrusion detection. Of course, we have not covered all that we have discussed, but of course, there are new points as well. Uh, we spoke about swimming pool, uh, spas and all that, so which is uh, not captured in this image. Or uh, if we have to get into which type they are, uh, they belong to under uh, the three categories that we discussed, uh, probably we will have to see whichever is going to have maximum human contact and the risk of electrical shock is going to be more probably will have to be put under uh, safety extra low voltage system uh, if we can make an attempt to do that or uh, a digital video no it can be our uh, PELV or uh, FELV security and access control mm, can be brought under uh, SELV fire detection and al alarm uh, some of them are going to fire uh, in fact detection and alarm is not going to carry water whereas fire suppression systems will carry water so detection and alarm we can have it as uh, uh, PELV or FELV HVAC maintenance services depending upon the system of HVAC there is again going to be water content so we can use depending upon the requirement some of it can be SELV lighting control and retrofit uh, uh, can be a feel uh, yes PLV smoke control yes it can either belong to PLV or uh, FELV and indoor air quality yes water management is something where uh, we can probably use SELV because of <coughs> the risk of electrical shock and the risk of uh, fault as well energy management energy information management just because it is controlling every other system the uh, failure in this can't uh, it can't be afforded as often so this can also be our uh, SELV on-site technical service may or uh, may not belong to SELV enterprise system integration this is again as uh, 
important as our uh, information management so we can consider this in SALV. Mechanical maintenance and retrofit asset locator can belong to PLE or FELV environment control again to PLE or uh, FELV. So with this uh, we will probably stop it here for this session. So in the next session we will try to see all of this in detail uh, in terms of what they actually are. Most of us must be knowing it. Ne uh, nevertheless we will just quickly run through the, uh, those in detail and uh, also we will uh, we'll talk about the cables a brief introduction to the cables that uh, comes under these uh, because that is uh, that is something which a network provider would use and we will quickly have a, uh, an understanding about the point matrix which is very uh, similar to our uh, wiring systems and uh, if we could do this in the next uh, session i think this module the uh, subheading number one of this module will get completed right so see you in the next session where we will take up these in detail